make it record. All right, welcome everyone. Um, so good to see you. My name is Sarah McAllister. I am the Senior Associate Director here at Tulane University in the Office of Alumni Career and Professional Development. I will be the uh, background tech admin for this session today. Um, one uh, quick housekeeping. So this is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Um, I will put it in the chat, the link. And I also know that if you registered earlier, you uh, should have received an email from me with that link as well. Um, so feel free to access that uh, at, at any time. Um, all right, with that, I wanna just get right into our topic today. Um, I'm really excited to have Pamela Weinberg here with us. She has done some sessions with us previously and is part of our Career Coach Referral Network. Um, she is gonna introduce herself uh, with this topic of leadership from the living room. I know I'm personally really excited mm -hmm. and interested to hear about this. Um, and uh, I know that she's gonna bring a lot of great content. Um, so Pamela, I'm gonna hand it off to you and, and thank you for being here. Sure, thank you. Thanks so much, Sarah, for having me. And welcome, everyone. Um, so I'm Pamela Weinberg, and I am in New York City. That's where I'm based. Um, I got affiliated with Tulane because my son luckily chose it as his college. And um, I spent a very happy four years there visiting and parents weekend and got hooked on Jazz Fest. And have spoken a bunch for Tulane students and alumni, been involved in career fairs. And um, it's something, it's a school that I just love and I'm so happy to be um, a part of it in any way, shape or form. So thanks for having me today, Sarah. <clears throat> so today we're gonna talk about leadership from the living room. And this topic really came about for me during the pandemic when, um, prior to the pandemic, I spoke a lot about leadership. I spoke a lot to emerging leaders, um, people who were looking to get into leadership positions, and I did it always in person. Um, and then when the pandemic came about, I was like, wow, you know, so much of what I spoke about in for this topic really has to do with being in the workplace with people, getting, as we call, like real FaceTime. And all that is really change so much. So how, how do people either lead while working from home or become leaders while working from home? So we're going to learn a bit about both today, but to really best help me um, give examples and provide content that will benefit you the most, I want to do um, just have Sarah launch a poll so I can sort of understand where people are at who are here today. All right, so it's actually a really nice mix. So we have 70% um, who are yes, currently in a leadership role. Um, and then we have uh, about 14% that no, and then also working towards a leadership position. Great. Okay. So many of you are, um, all, are, are already in leadership positions, which is, which is fantastic. Great. And uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of, a, a little bit of, of everything, but we're going to focus a lot, obviously on how to be a, a good leader while working uh, remotely or working in a hybrid manner. So this is some of the stuff we're going to, I will be covering today, um, you know, better communication, productivity, boundaries and expectations, feedback, exposure, building trust and togetherness, being a good teammate, some tips for emerging leaders and how to level up your skill set as a leader. Um, I will, if, if you can hold your questions till the end, but please put them in the chat box as we go along. I'm, I, I'm not gonna look at the chat box while I'm presenting, I'll, it will be too distracting for me. But it, obviously if you have questions, please put them in and then at the we'll, I'll have time for Q and A um, at the end of the presentation. We'll have plenty of time. So without further ado, um, one of the most important things you can do as a leader is to um, have 
clear expectations of your team. <clears throat> and that's something you can do through communication. And communication is something that you'll probably hear the word of communication today a thousand times. I don't think I have a slide in the deck probably without the word on it, because if there's one thing you can do as a leader, it's communicate. And I always say, communicate more than you think you need to. So one of the things to communicate is about your, you know, about the guidelines, you know, what are the expectations for your employees who are working from home or working hybrid? Um, uh, you want to communicate your metrics for your teams, and you want to really set guidelines to know what's expected and that the employees should know um, what to expect if those guidelines are not followed. You know, what happens then? Um, one of the things that I thought was so interesting, and of course, I love this stuff. So I read so much about leadership is um, to be a macro manager rather than a micro manager, which I just think is so interesting, which is really to allow your employees, after you've communicated these guidelines, allow them some room to figure out things for themselves and not be on top of every decision, which you know, in some ways, is, is easier while working remotely because you're not, you know, seeing them all the time in the office and you're, they do have more physical space. As I said, communication. So you want to communicate more than you think you need to. And I think in working with um, clients, I don't even think I said what I do, that I'm a career coach, but maybe I did at, in any event, but I'm a career coach and I work a lot with individual clients who are looking to who are emerging leaders or in leadership roles and one of their biggest communication um one of their biggest complaints is a lack of communication from their managers so i think you know really you can't communicate too much is the bottom line you really want to be able to over communicate let your people know what your preferred methods of communication are. Is it Slack? Is it text? Is it phone? Um, probably not email. Is it, you know, share Google documents so you can you know, just to be working on projects together. Um, leave time in your day or once a week to have um, a weekly team meeting. A lot of people do that on Mondays to sort of set up the agenda for the week. And it's a great way to make sure everyone is sort of on board. And then maybe on, on the Friday have, you know, the status report sent so that everyone sort of knows what's gotten done, what's moved to the following week. Um, make sure that the goals are understood by everyone and to provide easy access for both asynchronous and synchronous communication methods. So to make sure that you have those, you know, both those real-time interactions by phone or video or in person, if you're on a hybrid model or, you know, back to work certain days and asynchronous communication that doesn't need scheduling. And that, you know, comes into play a lot when, if you're working remotely, you have employees on different time zones, you work for an international company where people are working, you know, in different countries or continents um, and who are, you know, maybe logging on at night when it's your morning. So, you know, to make sure that all of those options are available to your team is really very key. Seek feedback. And, uh, and provide feedback. So um, there's re it's really, really important to have provide feedback um, on an ongoing basis. It, you know, it used to be, you know, a, a mere few years ago that you could just, you know, pop by your boss's office and say like, hey, do you have a minute? I just want to run this by you. And when you're working from home, again, or have employees in other time zones, countries, um, you know, maybe working different um, different hours, um, it's really hard to get that time. And, you know, it's hard to just sort of like make a Zoom call for like a five minute question. People feel uncomfortable doing that or asking for your time that way. 
So, you know, just make sure to seek feedback from your people as much as possible on how they're doing, you know, just like a five minute check in call on projects that they're working on for short term and long term. Um, and for folks who are, have their, you know, have their own managers, make sure that you're providing your own feedback and comments on your work so that a manager doesn't have to become a micromanager. That's the beauty of, you know, macro management, you know, is you don't want to have to be on top of your employees all the time asking them, how, how's it going? How's, how are you doing on this? Um, make sure that you just keep an open door for both. Um, seeking feedback and providing feedback as well. Make it easy to be productive. And I think this was something that, you know, folks talked about a lot at the beginning of the pandemic when people were getting set up at home with home offices and, and their laptops at home or whatever systems they have at home. Now things are a little bit different. And one of the issues that I'm seeing with um, my clients who are in hybrid work or, or who are managing people who are, you know, some days in the office and some days at home or some folks are fully at home, there's a feeling of inequity sometimes with the people who are either at home or in the office that, you know, maybe there's in-person meetings that folks at home are missing um, or video meetings that folks in the office are missing. So make sure that you are providing sort of equal opportunity um, to everyone, you know, whether it's, you know, sort of one, you know, one meeting a week, that's sort of an all hands on deck video meeting, even for folks who are in the office. So people who are working remotely don't feel like they're out of the loop, missing out, sort of overlooked or, or you know, not made to feel as important as others. Um, make sure your team has whatever productivity tools you feel will make their lives um, easier, will make it easier to communicate with them, to make them more productive, to help them um, set and stick to their goals. Provide opportunities for collaboration. This is something that came up a lot during the, um, the pandemic. And one of the things that was really lost, I've had a lot of clients who gotten hired during the pandemic and never met anyone in person on their team, nor other folks on other teams. So, you know, meeting people on your team via Zoom is, is pretty easy because you're going to have team meetings. You're going to meet with your manager. If you're a leader, you're going to meet with your, your team and your senior manager, senior staff. But collaborating with folks on other on other teams or in other departments and working cross functionally is a lot harder, you know, especially if you've started a job fully remotely. So as a leader, make sure that you're providing those opportunities for your people to have collaboration across other teams um, with their colleagues. So much good thinking is done peer to peer. You know, I have a lot of folks who work in tech who are sort of, you know, in the customer success manager role. And they tell me all the time the importance of being able to, you know, sort of check in with a peer who's in another area and say like, hey, you know, what have you done when you've had this issue come up? And without having that sort of agency to make those meetings happen, um, people are going to be less likely to do so. So as a manager, something really helpful you can do for your team is to provide and encourage those opportunities for collaboration. Um, other things you can do is share work that you're proud of um, on Zoom calls and give credit um, to others, for, uh, for example, of, of good things that they've, that they've done, uh, goals that they've met. Um, send colleagues praise when they hit uh, a new benchmark, send responses to emails that are sent to you that are friendly and gracious, and try to work directly with as many people as you can, both on your team and outside of your team. Designate, oops, um, uh, where am I with this? Okay, sorry, I have like the wrong order on my 
my notes. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Oh, there it is. I skipped the page. Um, gain exposure and visibility. If there's one thing that's super difficult when you're working from home, it's gaining exposure and visibility. And what do you really need sort of to get promoted into your next role? You really need exposure and visibility. So um, that, that's really been such a challenge. Um, so how do you sort of, you know, lead by example here? Keep your camera on. And I know a lot of you here don't have your cameras on and that's fine. I'm sure you're at work or multitasking and that's totally cool. I don't care about it from my vantage point. But when you are um, in a meeting with your team and you're a leader, you, you, you have to keep your camera on. Don't let yourself get distracted with emails while you're on, you know, while you're on meetings with your team because they're looking to you for, for as, as their leader. And they're looking to you to set an example to both walk the walk and talk the walk. So walk the talk. So if you're having those expectations um, for your team, you want to make sure that you will do the same. Come prepared to all of your meetings. Um, I always used to say, you know, take a seat at the table, um, the physical table. So if you're in, uh, um, if you're in your office if, and you're going to a big meeting and, and boardroom, don't take that seat that's, you know, in the back by the by the window that doesn't fit around the table. Take your seat at the table. Make your presence known. I do a lot of work with folks. Um, in the personal branding realm. And that's one of really the one of the most important things. And, and come prepared. I, I work with um, a young woman who was an emerging leader. She was getting her first leadership role and she worked in a venture capital firm. And she was really one of the few women with a room full of men. And she felt very intimidated going into these meetings. And she said she really didn't speak. Um, but she was looking to get promoted and be a leader. So, you know, we sort of worked on building her confidence to be able to speak up in a meeting. And we decided, you know, as part of her homework, she would really study the meeting agenda and come prepared for, with each meeting for a comment on something that they were going to talk about and a question that she was going to ask. So that she knew for sure there were going to be at least two times during the course of the meeting that she was participating. And this helped her greatly um, with her confidence because the, the first time, you know, the more you hear your own voice in these meetings, the more comfortable you feel sharing, you feel sharing. And that was a big confidence boost for her. Um, and it allowed people to see her in a different realm as someone who is a leader and who would be a good leader. Um, schedule meetings with colleagues in other departments. That's also a way for you to heighten your visibility um, in your workplace. Ask your manager um, to help you with your goals. Be an ally. You know, if it's, if, and if your manager is not the person who can do that for you, Find a mentor uh, within your organization or a sponsor within your organization who can help you reach your goals. Let them know what your goals are and have them help you and be an advocate on your behalf. Participate in volunteer opportunities. This is something that's really interesting to me. So I worked with um, another woman who wanted to get promoted. She worked at a consulting firm and the consulting firm was sort of split into, into two sides. One was the accounting side and one was the consulting side. She was on the account on the accounting side and was desperate to get moved into the consulting side. Uh, very bright, very articulate, got great reviews, could not get hired into the consulting side. Um, she applied to many jobs, wasn't getting them. I knew she was a runner because we had spoken about it before. And I said to her, does your company have a running club? She's like, yeah, they actually do. You know, we do, um, they do some races together. And I said to her, have you ever thought about joining? Um, it might be a great way for you to meet folks who are outside of your current network 
and maybe meet some people who are actually on the consulting side who you could network with. Sure enough, she joined. She was a great runner. People loved her. And she was also extremely smart and personable. And sure enough, somebody on a senior person was on the running team with her and ended up hiring her into his group. So a great way to build that visibility for yourself is to think out of the box within your company. What can you raise your hand for or take on besides your job responsibilities that can give you additional exposure and visibility to other people within the organization who could potentially help you? To your team's horn to acknowledge their work in company meetings. First of all, it's great for your team morale for you to do that. And it makes, you know, it, it, it's great as a leader to be able to be generous with your compliments and feedback and what feels better than getting publicly acknowledged with senior people in a team, um, in, a, in, a, in a Zoom meeting or, or uh, in-person meeting. And I'm going to talk um, a little bit later about leading with kindness and empathy, which I think has become even more and more important since the pandemic has began. Boundaries. So um, again, this is something else that comes up all the time with my clients, um, how to create, uh, how to maintain boundaries while working from home. It's probably the hardest thing to do because, you know, your, your day bleeds into your work day. Your, your work home, work at home is it's really hard to have a, a real um, hard stop. But I, I sort of urge you to think about that hard stop. So the first thing I would say is tap into your natural work rhythms. Um, if you uh, don't have a boss who is a micro manager and just cares about your the outcome of your work, not you being at your desk till 7 p.m. And I hope that you all are managers like that. Um, tap into your natural work rhythms. I have a, a client who he's an early bird. He wakes up at like 5 a.m. exercises and then does his best work from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. And, you know, most people haven't logged on till nine, you know, but he's, he's already gotten three hours done and that works for him. And he's getting his work done. His reviews are great. Um, of course, if there's a meeting that he needs to be on, that's in a, you know, synchronous work time, um, he will be logged on. But for the asynchronous work, he's doing that at a time that works for him. Build exercise into your day. You got to get up and like walk around. If you know, walk around your house, walk outside, take your dog for a walk during the day. Give yourself a little bit of a break um, multiple times in the day to get up and move around. Take your days off seriously and take your employees' days off seriously as well. Um, I think there's a lot of burnout with feeling that we need to be available. 24 seven, we have our work emails on our phones. We're expected to log in, um, you know, 24 seven. I think, you know, we all wanna be respectful of employee burnout, potential for employee burnout. So you want your employees to take their days off seriously and you should take your days off seriously as well as leaders. Again, leading by example, we all need a break to recharge our batteries, to do things that we like, to be with friends or family and, um, and, and have that time to ourselves that's not gonna be interrupted by work. Um, and respect your own boundaries. I just was working with a, a client on this and she said she really likes to log off at six at night, but she feels that she will get an email from her boss at seven and feels the need to answer. So we worked on boundaries with her. And, you know, she said, I could live with myself logging off at six and not logging back on till eight in the morning. And I said, then you should. And what will happen if your boss emails you at seven and you don't respond is they will learn that you're not going to respond. They won't, that you won't respond till eight in the morning and they will stop emailing you at that time. Now, of course, 
if there's a project and you have to work late, people work late. But this is, again, respecting people's boundaries and having them respect your boundaries as well with start and end times to your work day. All of this that we've talked about so far really comes from building trust and togetherness. And this takes time. Um, I read this was a great, uh, a great post from McKinsey and Company's blog about the importance of building trust and togetherness. Um, it's really one of the pillars of supporting employee innovation and creativity. Um, and it's hard to do this when you're not, you know, seeing people in the, the break room at work or being able to grab coffee with them um, during the day. It's a lot harder to build this trust and togetherness remotely. So um, these are some, you know, these are some tips that were shared as far as how to build this trust and togetherness as a leader. Um, being reliable, you know, um, as a leader and as an, as an employee that you can count, there's someone that you can count on to meet their commitments, you know, get their debt, get their work done, um, meet their deadlines. Um, acceptance, I accept who you are and respect your perspective. As a, as a good leader, um, you want to have employees on your team, folks on your team who don't always disagree with you, who don't always agree with you, who aren't just, you know, yes, men or women, people who are, are um, you respect because they bring a different perspective to the team. Um, but without that underpinning of trust, it's harder to be able to really speak up and maybe have a different opinion. Um, be open, share what you think, um, give that feedback, very important feedback, provide feedback, and be open to accepting feedback and make time for that. And as I said before, you know, be authentic. People on your team look to you to set the tone um, on those boundaries you're creating, the trust you're creating, the um, communication you're, you're having. You're, as a leader, you are the person who, who everyone is looking to, to ensure that all of that is, is happening. Be consistent with your, with your words. Lead with kindness. This is something that came up a lot during um, the early, the early days of COVID when people were, you know, sort of thrown into this work from home situation and were, were oftentimes, you know, got ill themselves, were taking care of people who were sick, had a lot of childcare issues, kids who were homeschooled, older parents, you name it. So I think more of our home life sort of, you know, seeped into our work lives. And we had to become more aware that our employees weren't just employees, but they were people with real lives and real issues, problems, things that cropped up the same, the same way we were as we were slash are as leaders. So, you know, what can you do to lead with kindness? Um, learn how to express empathy Nothing goes further than empathy. I see you're struggling. You know, it seems like you're having a tough time. It's it takes very little to say, and it's, it goes an incredibly long way. People want to be heard and understood. So just starting a sentence like that with an employee who maybe has missed a deadline, rather than getting angry, you know, it seems like you're going through a rough time. You know, can we talk about it? Is there anything we can do to take this off your plate to make this easier for you? Um, leading with empathy. Encourage your employees to take that time off. People have gotten really burnt out, especially with the lack of boundaries, with being on our phones 24-7, with um, 
a lot of, especially folks like in you know, the service industry or tech uh, at some points where people were really understaffed. A lot of folks were doing the work of, you know, two people. So people really need that time off and encourage them to take it. Um, as a leader, you want to have your team know if your company has access to counseling and mental health services, and if you're in a position to expand that within your organization, if you're someone who's in HR or someone who um, has the ear of you know, senior leaders, this is something that a lot of companies are, are doing, providing um, coaches uh, for mental health providing options for counseling, having insurance cover some mental health services. So that's something that can be extremely helpful uh, for your employees. Foster these dialogues. These aren't easy conversations to have. Um, and you know, people may be very private, but just to have some more of that emotional awareness around folks' situations. Um, I know just speaking from a personal sense, um, I'm on a, a board of, a, of an organization, which is the International Coaching Federation, and it's a working board, and I have a, a lot of work to do with the board. I run a big committee, and my dad has not been well, and it's been really hard for me to run my business and to give the amount of time I needed to this committee. And a wonderful leader on that committee knew what was happening with me and turned to me and said, Pamela, I know what you're going through with your dad. What can I take off your plate? And it meant the world to me because my thought was, I'm going to have to resign because I don't like to not do a good job at anything. Um, but in this case, this wonderful leader within my organization knew I was struggling and lent, you know, offered to lend a hand and it, you know, just has, you know, gone so far with me and just, you know, extremely appreciative. Um, so be generous, show your appreciation to your team and your colleagues. Um, I just read an article, I wish I remembered where it was, um, about a CEO of a very large company. It might've been on Twitter who um, the employee actually posted the email, emailed her um, when he got into work and he said, um, hey, you know, I was speaking of you on my way in this morning and I just want to let you know you've really been doing a great job. And she posted it on, you know, on, on her Twitter, on her LinkedIn and said how much it meant to her. You know, it took this CEO a minute to uh, send the email but this went such a long way to have your to have your work acknowledged by your senior leader means everything and costs nothing. So that's a you know a great way to show your generosity for your for your team. Oops. Okay. So speaking of teams, so how can you be a better teammate? Um, you want to. Again, back to communications, um, make sure you're communicating uh, all the time with those within your team. Um, take advantage of whatever you can do with that, your, that your company offers, you know, happy hours or virtual breaks that you can take where you can just like grab a coffee on, you know, either it's via Zoom or if you're in person with someone on your team and just have some time to just like have a casual catch up on work, on personal life. And that just builds a lot of rapport and having that rapport goes such a long way for product toward productivity. Relax those stringent deadlines and hours and give yourself a break and give others a break. And that's, you know, sort of very much like my colleague did for me. She knew I needed a break. Um, and I needed help and she gave that to me. So just be aware of what's going on with folks on your team. Um, you know, if it's a, you know, a school vacation and they have childcare issues, you know, maybe that's a week where you might offer to take on, you know, more, more of, you know, take something off their plate because you know that they're full up taking care of their children that week, just to have more awareness um, around people's personal, you know, personal lives, 
personal struggles. So for those uh, emerging leaders on the, um, on the call today, um, or even you know folks who are looking to get to get promoted into their next uh, next level, I have a few tips for you. Um, stay connected. You know, be in touch with your manager. Share your share your ideas. Make your work visible. Like make sure people know what you're doing, and ask for that feedback. Don't wait until your once a year review to ask for feedback. Have a sit down with your manager, you know, once a quarter, whether, you know, whether it's in person or via Zoom or via phone, whatever your communication is. And, you know, ask them how you're doing, you know, let them know what your goals are and, and have them talk to you about, you know, where they think you are um, in, in meeting your goals or getting that promotion. Don't be afraid to contribute, you know, share your opinion, share your ideas. That all comes from that, you know, having that trust with those on your team, having the trust in your manager that even if you're saying something that may not, they may not agree with, they're gonna respect you enough to listen to your, your ideas, even if it's not in alignment with what their ideas are. Keep a record. This is something I tell every one of my clients. Compile a list of your achievements and have them handy. Like I just like them to do even a Google Doc, but whatever works for you. Because when it comes time for your performance review at the end of the year, say your review is in you know, February, you're not going to remember everything that you did since the last year. So I suggest you write down you know, key metrics for yourself, key performance uh, metrics, accomplishments that you've had, projects that you've worked on, where you've been successful, and um, so that when you go to have these meetings, you have a record of everything that you've done. And another tip that I give regarding this, regarding, you know, for emerging leaders or getting promoted is take a look at what the job description is for the next job you want and see how you stack up. You know, what are you missing from that list? What are the things in that um, job description that you haven't done yet? And how could you get that experience? I'm a big fan of the on-the-job experience. How could you, within your current role, get that experience? Maybe it's taking on more responsibility. Maybe it's taking something off your boss's plate and saying, you know, putting your hand up and said, you know, can you give me a shot at this? I'd like to try to lead the next meeting. Uh, maybe it's working, it's with collaborating with folks in another department to gain um, more visibility. Um, so you can uh, get additional accomplishments on your roster and, and maybe it's you need to take a class or upskill a bit um, in order to get that promotion. So know what it is, you know, know what you're know what you're aiming for and, you know, make sure that you that you get to where you want to go. Network with other stakeholders. So, you know, this was sort of my, um, my example of my client who joined the running group. Um, she networked with other people within her organization and ended up getting a job staying where she was. So don't just think, you know, in a linear fashion, like, oh, I'm going to get my boss's job. Maybe you're going to get a job at a completely other department. So I encourage you to network within your organization. You know, um, learn about who's doing, uh, you know, a similar type of role in a different department and ask them for coffee, you know, whether it's virtual or, um, or in person to really learn more about what other opportunities may be available, whether it's in your company, if you work for a large company, or maybe it's outside of your company as well. So finally, and then I will have time for questions. Um, you might want to level up your leadership skills. You may currently be a leader and want to get to the next next rung, or maybe you're just you know thinking about getting your next leadership position. Um, be in the know. Um, read some great leadership publications. Um, Harvard Business Review is great. McKinsey and Company has great. Both of those have great blogs. I love newsletters from Tim Ferriss and Shane Parrish, who talk a lot about leadership and 
I always walk away with one or two tips that are actionable that I either, you know, would, would um, incorporate in my own career coaching practice or certainly share with my clients who are leaders. Take a leadership assessment to better understand your leadership style, where you thrive and maybe areas where you have some weaknesses. There's one called DISC that many companies use. It's a you know, very big and sort of in corporate professional development. So see if your company offers that to you. Um, you also could ask your professional development team or you know, folks in HR um, about, about a 360 review for yourself. Those are proven to be very helpful for my clients and it gives will help to give you a bird's eye view of how you're perceived and what you can do to improve. And, you know, it's folks who are above you, folks who work side by side with you, folks who work for you, all will give review you on certain, um, you know, certain factors and you get a very comprehensive report and feedback, which can be really useful. Finally, um, maybe you want to sign up for a class to gain some additional skills. Maybe, I don't know, public speaking isn't something that's your thing, but as a leader, it's something that you need to really do a lot more. Um, join Toastmasters or take a public speaking class, or maybe it's something that's with, you know, something technical that you need to learn. Maybe it's a new skill in SQL or R or something coding oriented, whatever it is, um, it's a great time sort of in between getting that to the next level to upskill for yourself. And it always is something that will look great on your resume or LinkedIn profile as well. So I um, I would love to open it this up for questions if folks have any, I don't see, I, I, don't, I can't see the chat. So Sarah, if you, Want to tell me if people have any questions? Yeah, so we've got one so far, and um, I know as people are thinking, they'll they'll start to ask more. Sure. Um, one of the questions is about um, what types of challenges have you seen? This might be a, a bit more nuanced, but what what okay. types of challenges have you seen with leaders who are um, going from currently hybrid, but they're going back to the office? So not, not necessarily like the hybrid, but like, you know, there are some companies that are wanting everybody to come back into the office. Have you seen anything that's particularly challenging or any tips for that scenario? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that has been really hard on managers having folks have to come back to, into the office. And I see it, I'm, I'm based in New York city, as I said, and I see it a lot here because a lot of the investment banks, um, are um, having their folks be in five days a week. And it's caused a lot of pushback and a lot of unhappiness. So you have a lot of disgruntled employees who are sort of dragged back into the office, having to you know, sort of get on a train when they haven't had a commute in so long and making their hours longer, making their time away from their families longer. So it's it's definitely been a challenge for those managers um, because a lot of other industries don't have that, you know, and some of the smaller companies aren't having their employees come back full time and are still having a hybrid model. So I think it will continue to be a frustrating pain point for managers, but I do believe like everything else in time, things will settle out in one way or the other. So I could see it settling out in that people are just either, you know, used to having to work five days a week in the office or those that are so disgruntled or unhappy will leave and will be replaced with people who are happy to be in the office five days a week or management will say, this isn't working for us. We're losing um, too many of our people. So we are going to go back to some kind of a hybrid model. So I, I'm thinking that there's going to end up not being a one size fits all approach, even for those companies right now that are saying we all need to be in the office together. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, 
There is a, um, this is, this is a really interesting question of, have you seen empathy being seen as a leader's weakness and leading to employees thinking that, thinking that they can get away with not working as hard? That is, that's a, actually a great question. Um, I think the strong leaders are actually empathic humans. Um, I look at someone like uh, Jamie Dimon, who's a, a big you know, leader. Of, he's a, he's a, runs JP Morgan in, in New York City. And he's you know, just always you know, sort of like always on CNBC. He's always in the news. If you think about Wall Street leaders, it's him. And he is known for his empathy towards his employees and, and himself. You know, as a cancer survivor, he shared his story. He's offered a lot to his employees in the way of healthcare and leads with empathy and has a company culture that leads with empathy. So I actually, um, I completely understand what this person, you know, what this person is saying. Um, and I think it's a little tricky with Female leaders and male leaders are often looked at differently in that way. And I think it's it's maybe a little more challenging for female leaders to find that balance or, or because they want to be perceived as leaders because they are, but sometimes they are if they if they feel like they're being too nice it can be a problem for their perception so mm -hmm. it, it is it is a tricky fine line to walk unfortunately still in this day and age there are so many more male leaders and men at the top than women you know women are still fighting through that glass ceiling in 2022 yeah yeah no that makes a lot of sense can you talk a little bit about, um, I'm thinking of the, the um, you know, new leader who is just really struggling with managing their team, getting the support, but knows that they want to be in a leadership role. What advice do you have for that person who is trying to figure out of like, you know, is maybe, is it the job? Is it the team? Is it them? How do you kind of untangle that? with with clients well not i mean not to toot my own horn but i would say you should if someone in that position should hire a coach because having a coach is really that's you know like a perfect reason to hire a coach and a lot of times companies will provide a coaches for for folks who are emerging leaders or may have professional development programs to help with lead, help leaders gain those skills um, they may have internal programs. I would say a great thing to do is to find a mentor internally um, and have someone, it doesn't have to be your boss and probably shouldn't be your boss, but somebody else at a more senior level than you to help you um, with some of the struggles of being a leader, to help you set out some goals for yourself, maybe to role play, you know, questions and answers or role play running a meeting role play, giving, providing feedback, role play what you do if an employee doesn't do what you ask them to do. Um, and that really, it always helps to learn from someone who's done it before. And you'll find your own style, but it's great to be able to get the help of someone outside of yourself to work with you on those, on those skills. And of course, there are a gazillion books on leadership that you can, you know, that you can buy articles to read. Like I said, you know, Harvard Business Review has so many wonderful articles on becoming a leader. Um, so those are also great resources. Do you have like kind of what your top one or two books? I know since you mentioned some really great resources, what are the books? I can definitely, um, I'm happy to send them out or I can send them to you and you can send them out to everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I'll, I'll create a little list of, I can create a resource list of blogs and, um, and books that I like that I think have been really helpful for me. 
Great. That was and that people was I follow. Awesome. I follow some great leadership um, people on, on Instagram as well or Twitter. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, and with that, um, I know that um, I think we're kind of at the end of our questions. And so I know you have your contact information. Can you just kind of talk about how people can can reach out to you and what yeah that so he, this is my contact info I have there's a little job search freebie here if anyone is in the market for a new job or looking for a new job I work with a lot of clients in who are in job search mode as well as people who are um emerging leaders and leaders um in their in their industries and I do a lot of my, my coaching is all remote now via Zoom. Um, so you can you know, reach out to me through my email, through my website to learn more about what I do. I speak a lot at companies and um, obviously universities on a variety of topics. And I'd love for you to follow me on Instagram. I post every Monday and Wednesday and I post on a variety of um, everything is career related and focused. And connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Be happy to um, have you in my network. Great. So I want to like thank everyone so much for coming today. And I hope that you all have walked away with a couple of tips on your leadership. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck with your, um, with your building, continuing to build your careers. And thank you so much for your time and attention today. Thanks, Pamela. Have a good day. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.